I'm Ez Devlin, I'm the set designer for The Trojans and also for Zalame, which is also playing in the ROH rep. And I want to talk a little bit about the process of a set designer using a scale model. We make models at various scales with operas. For the final model, it's part of my agreement with this opera house that I will deliver a 1 to 25 model that's specified. And it's important because you, I think any smaller scale, you can't really get the level of detail that you need to, to talk about the finish on these things. You can talk about form quite easily at 1 to 33 and a third or at 1 to 50, but 1 to 25 is optimum, really. My technique's very photographic, so I will spend my model-making time, a lot of it on the computer, in Photoshop, creating photographic surfaces. So these are all printed surfaces. And another designer might have more sculptor-based modelers actually modeling. So some of these details on here are not actually three-dimensional, they're photographic. These ones are all three-dimensional but some of these are photographic surfaces. And the reason I do it that way is because I'm trying to talk about a documentary photographic world. And especially in a house like this, which the standard of realization of the design is extremely accurate. So if you give a model, it will probably turn out exactly like that model. There are many, many reasons why we make a model. The first reason is for the designer, using it as a design tool. We're designing space, we're designing in three dimensions, we're designing sculptural objects. So it's very important that all our decisions are made in three dimensions so that we can plan not only the forms of the objects but the colours of the objects and the way the objects move in relation to one another. Once it's been made, it becomes then a very important element in communicating the design to the various collaborators who will realise the design. So the engineers, the draftsmen, the builders, they will all analyse this model and derive their drawings and their engineering analyses from it. The painters will then analyse the finishes and derive paint techniques from analysis of the model. The prop makers will scrutinise small elements and decide exactly how they're going to cast each of these objects based on how we've built this thing here. Next, as we get into putting on the piece, once we've built the scenic elements in the rehearsal room, it becomes very important for the stage management team, the director, the performers, to understand the space that they're in. Because it's one thing standing in it and seeing these objects around you and having a space of it, a sense of it around you. It's another thing to be able to look at this thing all together at scale and understand how the objects relate to one another and what they mean and why they're in a particular orientation. It's also useful for the lighting designer, the sound designers. It's also useful for all the collaborators to be able to come together on this model, agree how things are going to be, and all fully understand that they're talking about the same objects. I've sat in meetings about this horse, where we're talking about the pyro, the flames that are going to come out of this horse, or we're talking about how each of these elements is going to be built. And we all hold it in our hands. You know, we can hold this object in our hands, we can look at it, we can look at it from any angle. And OK, you can do that in a three-dimensional drawing, and now you can turn the drawing around in space. But for me, there's nothing quite like the information in a model. Mm -hmm.